Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss equilibrium. Today's essential question, how can equilibrium be shifted toward the reactants or toward the products? Remember to completely answer the essential question in your summary. All right, um, so before we talk about equilibrium, we need to discuss this term called reversible reactions. Okay, so first, let's talk about non-reversible reactions. Some reactions only go in one direction, from reactants to products, like H2 plus Cl2, which gives us um, hydrochloric acid or HCl. We know that these are the reactants and these are the products because the arrow tells us so. Okay, And this is the kind of reactions we've seen most of the time. All right. It turns out, though, that many reactions are what we call reversible. And a reversible reaction is one in which the con conversion of reactant to products and the conversion from products back to reactants occur simultaneously. For example, SO2 plus O2 produces SO3. You'll notice that the arrows, there's arrows are going both directions. Okay? These are the reactants. They are the things that we started with. These are, that is the product. However, at some point, you start out with the reactants making products, but at some point, the products start going back and making the reactant. So these are, that is, a reversible reaction. All right, next up, chemical equilibrium. So when you start a reaction, you start with your products, in this case we'll say we have two reactants, you mix them. So at the beginning, all you have is reactants, reactant plus reactant in your dish, okay? Um, so at first, you start making some products, okay? So you start just with reactant with plus reactant, and after a certain amount of time, you start making product, okay? As more products are produced, the rate of the forward reaction slows down. Okay, so as you start making more and more product, you get reactant plus reactant. I'm making a smaller arrow to show you that the reaction is slowing down. Okay, and then at a certain point, we'll talk about in a minute when that certain point is, we end up with reactant plus reactant producing product but the product at the same time then starts going back, breaking back apart into its reactants. At some point during the reaction, the forward reaction, so forward, right, going this way, going from reactants to products, will proceed at the same rate as the reverse reaction. So in a reverse reaction, it's going the other way from products back to the reactant. Okay, so at this point, there's actually no change in the amount of products or reactant being made. So the reaction is actually still going on, so you make a product, and as, you're, as the two reactants are getting together forming the product, at the very same time, a product is breaking apart back into the reactant. So something is still happening, let's say, in your reaction dish, but the net change is nothing, right? You're, every time you make a reactant, or make a product, you make a reactant, and back and forth, and back and forth. When you get to that point, you have reached what we've called chemical equilibrium. You have made as much product as you're going to make, because every time you make another product, it breaks down back into a reactant. Okay, so that is the point of chemical equilibrium. All right, changes in equilibrium, the point of the lecture. Um, a reaction in e chemical equilibrium is in perfect balance, perfect balance, equal sign, okay? Um, however, changes of almost any kind can disrupt this balance, okay? Um, when equilibrium is disturbed, when we have made some sort of change to disrupt the balance, um, that's how we disturb equilibrium. The system, the system being the reaction, makes adjustments to restore equilibrium, okay, to get things back in perfect balance. Okay, 
we're going to spend the rest of the lecture talking about factors or things that can affect equilibrium. Okay, how can we change this perfect balance so we can make more product or more reactant? Okay, so the first thing is concentration. So if concentration of a reactant or product is increased or decreased, the system, the reactant, that's the reaction, so the system is the reaction, adjusts to restore balance. All right, so I'm going to try to give you a visual picture as we're going through this. Let's use the example we had earlier on. I think it was, let's see, 2SO2 plus O2 gives us 2SO3. Okay, I like to think of this as a teeter-totter. Um, so we've got a teeter-totter. So there's my teeter-totter in yellow. Things are in perfect balance right now. Okay, so... Now, if we were to add reactant, okay, either reactant, it doesn't matter whether it's the SO2 or the O2, the forward blood reaction will increase. Well, let's talk about why. The reactants are on which side? These guys here, right? If we add more stuff there, what's going to happen? Which side then gets too heavy? The reactant side. So now our teeter-totter is going to be 2SO2 plus O2 produces 2SO3. There's a 3 there. There it is, sort of. Okay. Our teeter-totter is no longer in per perfect balance because we added reactant. It's too heavy there. So what I suggest... So think about it. What do we need to do? What does the reaction need to do to balance out again? It needs to start going in that direction, right? Which will use up some of the reactant and make more product. Once you do that, the teeter-totter will balance back out. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? I hope. Um, conversely, get rid of some of the stuff. What if instead of adding more reactant, we add more product? The product is on this side, right? SO3. So if we added SO3, the teeter-totter is now going to go, it's going to be heavier on the product side. 2SO2 plus O2 produces 2SO3. So now our teeter-totter is too heavy on the other side. So what do you have to do to balance it back out? You need to start making more reactant. We need more of that product to break apart and make more reactant. Okay. So, let me erase this stuff and, because you're not going to be wanting to draw teeter-totters all over your paper, that would be really irritating. So, let's try this. So, if I had, again, 2SO2 plus O2 produces 2SO3. All right, here's the way I think about it. Um, if I add reactant... I'm going to stick my finger, I can't show you my finger, but I'm going to stick my finger on the reactant side. And the reaction is going to proceed away, away from your finger. So it's going to proceed in that direction. If conversely, I add more product, so this side, if I stick my finger there, it's got to go away from there because that side's too heavy. So we're going to move that direction. That's how I remember it. Okay, so again, if you add more reactant, the reactant side becomes more he too heavy, and the direction proceeds in the direction of the products, okay, so to the right or forward. If you add more product, the product side becomes too heavy, so the reaction reverses. So we're going to go in the reverse direction or going from product back towards reactant until we get balanced out again, reaching equilibrium. All right, so now we need to think backwards. If the reactant is removed, so we're removing some of this stuff. So if we remove from the reactant side, what side's going to be too heavy? The product side. So our reaction would look like tilted down towards the product. Right? Right? 
So that means this side, the product side, is too heavy. So we're going to go in the reverse direction to make more reactant, right? If instead product is removed, if we remove product, what happens to the teeter-totter? The reactant side becomes too heavy. So our teeter-totter is going to tilt the other way. So now we removed product, so the reactant side here is too heavy. So the reaction is going to proceed in the forward direction from reactant toward product. Temperature is a second factor that can disrupt equilibrium, so let's take a few minutes to talk about that. All right, so um, as you guys know, many reactions either use or release heat. Okay, and those are the endothermic or the exothermic reactions. So an endothermic reaction uses heat. Um, you can think about heat as a reactant because heat is on the reactant side. And an exothermic reaction is a reaction that releases heat. You can think of heat as a product because it's on the product side. Now, you guys are going to have to remember endothermic versus exothermic, where the heat's located. Um, and a kind of corny little trick that helped me remember is that endothermic, in, endothermic enters the reaction, whereas exothermic, hmm, out of room, exits the reaction, right? So he exits, he's on the product side, endothermic enters, and he is on the reactant side. I don't know if that helps. Um, okay, so anyway, in an endothermic reaction, heat is entering, so think of it as, an, as a um, reactant. Exothermic, heat is exiting, it's on a product side, think of it as a product. Okay, so we'll talk about endothermic and exothermic reactions and how you can disrupt equilibrium. Um, so if you were to we'll start with an endothermic, so here's our little teeter-totter again. If you add heat to an endothermic reaction, so if you're adding heat, you're adding it to the reactant side because it's endothermic. So which side's going to be heavier? Well, the reactant side, which means the reaction's going to go in the forward direction, right? This side's heavier because you added heat, so we've got to start making quickly more product to balance things back out. Um, now, if you, instead of adding heat, you remove heat, so there's our teeter-totter again, so you take heat and you remove some of it, okay? Now, what do you have more of? Well, now you end up having more product. So, because you've removed heat, you've made the reactants lighter, right? Which makes the product side heavier. So which way is the reaction going to go this time? It's going to go in the reverse direction towards the reactants. Okay. For an exothermic re reaction where heat is exiting, it's on the product side, if you add heat, the teeter-totter. So now if we add heat, if we add it over here, our reactant, our products, I mean, sorry, our products become heavier, so which means our teeter-totter is going to tip down towards the product side. So we need to start making more reactant. Things are going to go in the reverse direction. If, on the other hand, we remove heat, so we're going to get rid of some of the heat, now which side's heavier? Now the reactant side is heavier, so the reaction's going to need to go in the forward direction towards the products. So if you think of heat as a product or reactant, depending on which side it's on, whether it's an endothermic, it would be a reactant, exothermic, it would be a product, and then just treat it almost like changing concentration, right? Adding or subtracting something. It's actually really not that big of a deal to figure out. 
So that is how you can mess with equilibrium using heat. Pressure can also affect equilibrium. So a change in pressure can change equilibrium if, this part's important, if and only if the reactants and products are all in the gas phase. So if we look at our example problem, we have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas produces ammonia or NH3 gas. So in this particular reaction, a change in pressure can indeed change equilibrium. Okay, so an increase in pressure. So when we think about an increase in pressure, when we're talking about molecules in the gas phase, think of the gas maybe being in a balloon. So we squeeze the balloon, which is going to be an increase in pressure, reducing the volume, right? The balloon now gets smaller and those gas molecules are smushed together in a smaller space. So when we increase the pressure, we will shift the reaction towards the side with fewer molecules. All right, so now let's go back and look at our, our equation representing our reaction and figure out how many molecules we have. So on the reactant side, we have um, one nitrogen molecule, right, the invisible one, and three hydrogen molecules giving us a total of four molecules on the reactant side. So one nitrogen plus three hydrogens produces two ammonias. So that means that we have less molecules on the product side. So in this case, an increase in pressure will shift the reaction in the forward direction because the forward direction has the fewer molecules. If we then decrease the pressure, so think of letting go of the balloon, we now have a larger volume, the molecules are less smushed up. So in this case, when we decrease the pressure, um, we will shift the reaction towards the side with the, why did I put less? Let's try that again. With the greater number of molecules, which would be the reactant side, so when we decrease pressure in this particular reaction, the reaction will go in the reverse direction. Okay, so that's pressure. Again, keep in mind that with pressure, we're only talking about when all of the reactants and products are in the gas phase. All right, that's it for today.